What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and I'm here to ask and answer the simple question, what is the best mining pool post EIP 1559? This is a question I've been struggling with, of course, since the release of EIP 1559 due to payout changes, fee changes, etc. And hopefully I have some answers for you, at least how to find or start to find the best mining pool currently available. Let's get into it right after a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is myself. To support the channel, click the join button below the video and you will get access to our privately hosted rocket chat. Selecting the $1.99 option will get you access, and after that, you need to head over to the Membership tab, scroll down, and expand out your membership perks. Find the section for connecting on social media, and in that section, there will be a secret registration URL to join Rocket Chat, where you can sign up to enjoy talking with other cryptocurrency enthusiasts and miners without spammers, scammers, or bots. Welcome back. So when choosing a mining pool, there are multiple factors to consider. Of course, your latency to the pool, which we've talked about previously, and you should check that video out on how to reduce stale shares, which is basically using a tool to check, of course, the latency to any given pool to basically increase profits. Then we need to take into account the fee structure of said pool to make sure that we are paying the least amount of fees possible while also maximizing profits, as well as now the payout fees that have been pushed onto the miner from the pools because previously there would just be a pool fee, but the fee on the Ethereum network or the layer one network now gets charged to the miner as opposed to the pool covering it. So that's a new thing that's changed as well across multiple pools. This isn't something that's just like a single pool that's doing this. There are still some options for low fees to no fees to, of course, not paying for that. The other thing we have to take into account is MEV or also known as minor extracted value or maximal extracted value and how much of a percentage each pool is taking of that extracted value. There's also the conspiracy theory surrounding Eden, but we're gonna save that for another video. What I'm gonna show you today is the easiest tool I've found to determine the profitability for your mining rigs on any given pool, or at least the biggest pools that we have available to us. And that tool is called miningpoolsprofits.com. And as you can see here, we have a list of pools and at the bottom you can put in your hash rate. So if we had my hash rate of four giga hash, right? we would be able to go through and based on the last few days, we can take a look at what the rewards are based on our hash rate. Now, the reason I specify that there are stale shares and basically checking the latency to the pool is because that will affect, of course, the profitability. So if we had, let's say 10, stale or invalid shares on crazy pool, but we had zero on the rest of the pools, you can see how that will significantly shift the profitability of that particular pool. That's why your best bet is to ensure that you follow my guide on how to reduce stale shares and checking your latency to each pool to determine which pool is the best for you, because that will strongly influence, of course, the profitability of said pool. Now, a great thing on this website as well that they do cover is going to be in orange here is going to be the MEV fee, which is the minor extracted value, as well as the fee here. The only thing this does not cover that is important to note is going to be the actual fees that you need to pay on layer one basically payouts. And so for example, all the pools pretty much except for Hivon right now, which is an outlier that we'll talk about, essentially charges the, the miner for the payouts of the, of the, uh, the rewards. So if we take a look at, for example, crazy pool right now, you can see that I'm actually, I am working on basically 
testing it out, we can do a look up here and we can go to our settings tab and I got to move some more rigs over here and we can essentially change the gas price limit and excuse my hive bot i'm having some issues with a couple rigs that we'll be working on tonight they were stable until i switched them over to crazy pool last night of course so as you can see here we can change the gas price limit and it'll give you an estimate right so this would be our price that we would pay to get our payout so not only are we paying the one percent pool fee but we are also paying the gas price for the transaction of the block reward in this particular case there's also payment threshold to take into account here for larger miners right now as we can see here if we remove, remove these stale shares from crazy pool right you can let's get it to reset I believe maybe flex pool is winning right now no crazy pool is definitely still winning crazy pool is the most profitable but they are going to charge you that fee when you're going out so you need to take that into of course consideration estimated gas fee percentage is 0.21 depending on what your payment threshold is like this does have a minimum payout threshold of 0.01 but if I did that with my gas prices and was getting frequent payouts, I would be paying way too much in fees. So I have mine set higher. And that's gonna be up to you however you wanna set that. For the most part, all pools are going to function the same except for two pools in particular. And that's going to be Ethermine as well as Hiveon. So Hiveon pool right now, as it sits, does not have any fees if you're mining to it now there's a couple different ways you can handle it you can pay per rig if your rigs are on hive on or if your rigs are on hive on and you're mining to the pool you can pay a three percent fee and that's just going to work out to however you know you manage your rigs and however large your rigs are right so if you just have a couple cards on a rig you might want to be paying that three percent fee as opposed to paying the uh, whatever it costs the three dollars for the rig you can check out the referral link for hive os down in the description below there are other options as well we're going to be doing a comparison once again sorry for these alerts i'm going to go ahead and mute it i was just doing some changes over there but essentially you do have this option you could even use a different os like of course even windows and mine to the pool with no transaction fees however their profits do seem to be a little bit lower as we can see with of course the miningpoolsprofits.com it's down here even below f2 pool easel mining pool hub spider pool spark pool either mine and flex pool but you don't have to worry about the fees so you have to start doing some calculations and that will be up to you depending on the size of your farm now the other pool that functions different right now as it sits and we're working on a guide for this is going to be of course, Ethermine. Now, Ethermine allows, and we've talked about this before, there is a guide for Polygon payouts, so you can check that out, allows for basically layer two Polygon payouts. And the importance of this is it allows for daily payouts and significantly reduces the fees. It doesn't charge you a gas fee when it's going out. And therefore, you know, you can realize more of the profits provided there's an easy way to liquidate and now thankfully there's an easy way to liquidate with crypto.com which we'll talk about later in the week as well so hit the notification sub button if you're interested in that but at this point ethermine's going to be probably the best bet for the small home miners uh, hive os probably for the medium farm miners that are just wanting the layer one pps payouts that sort of thing and then if you want to really try to start stretching profitability on larger farms and you're okay with those layer ones it's clear on the site provided you have a good connection and, and you've checked your latency that crazy pool right now is going to be the most profitable and that is essentially here you go so i'll show you guys this as well how does that work he goes over it 
And he says, this website shows an estimated amount of crypto mined by a, by a pool, ETH for the moment, based in is the reported hash rate. Anyways, I think there's a little bit of a language barrier here. Meaning that I divide the total reward, MEV plus block reward, by the hash rate of the pool. I calculated then the amount received by 100 mega hash, and then I store them into the database. So this site shows real streaming data. However, you must understand that this data may happen in, in an ideal world with no stale shares and invalid shares and 100% luck on your GPU process. And other factors. So this data doesn't mean that you'll receive the amount informed here. It's an estimated amount and it will depend on the range of time that you are mining in the pool. So that's the other thing to discuss here. If you're pool hopping, one day is not going to be indicative. It's not going to be long enough on the pool for you to determine if it was more profitable than another pool because most pools have some sort of pool hopping prevention within them. So you're going to have to run longer form tests. And if you want to do that yourself, do that. The best thing to do is once again, check the latency. The lowest latency is going to reduce your stale shares and that's going to increase your profits regardless. Like we showed, just having the 10 stale shares on Crazy Pool drops its profitability down to fifth place. So just because Crazy Pool looks to be the most profitable, if you have more stale shares there, you're going to have a bigger problem. You also have to worry about pool luck. Because Crazy Pool doesn't find as many blocks, typically, you're going to be very extra dependent on the pool luck and have to mine for a longer period of time to realize the profits depending on the size of your farm. So these are all things to take into consideration. These are things that I'm taking into consideration. Like you saw, we are trying Crazy Pool. We do seem to have basically around the same latency between Hive On and Crazy Pool, which we were in Hive On before. And then I'll probably play around with the Polygon play payouts so we can do some uh, guides on that later on. There is also the option of the easel pool, which people have talked about previously, and I am working on a guide for it. I'm just not sure that the profitability is there, primarily because every hour or so it kicks you off of Ethereum, has you mine some easel, and it's not really true merge dual mining like something you would see with Script and Litecoin and Dogecoin. It's a little bit different because you aren't mining Ethereum at the same time that you're mining Zill. You're just mining Zill for a very short period of time. Anyways, I hope this video is helpful, that you found some tools that you found uh, helpful as well. If you did find the video helpful, please be sure to go down and hit that join button and support the channel with the memberships there. That's how we keep the channel rolling and going. So that is much appreciated. And I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to see more. Also, you can check out this playlist for more content talking about cryptocurrency.